So ladies and gentlemen, because of the history uh, within this game, this is going to be a three-parter. This is our Mega Post Stanley Cup podcast series. Now I've got numerous requests of this over the years, and I really feel I can do it justice because now that Montreal overachieved this year, we can talk about the overachievement of the LA Kings against the Oilers uh, in the 1982 playoffs, cumulating in what has been called the miracle at Manchester. Now this is part one of the three-part series we're doing. Now the miracle on Manchester is a nickname given to an NHL playoff game between the Kings and Oilers that took place on April 10th. 82. Now I saw some of the game but only in partial amounts because they were going back and forth with highlights at Hockey Night in Canada. Now the game, the third to best of five postseason series, was played at the Forum, the King's home arena at the time, which was situated on Manchester Boulevard in the LA suburb of Inglewood. The Kings completed the largest comeback in NHL playoff history in the game as they were down 5 nothing, entering the third period and won the game 6-5 in overtime. Combined with upset wins in games 1 and 5, the Kings eliminated the heavily favored Wayne Gretzky led Oilers in a 3-2 series victory to reach the second round and stymied the, uh, the Gretzky dynasty for at least a couple of years. Now the contest was the third of five game first round playoff series between the Kings and Oilers. Now under the playoff format that year. The number one team would take on number four in each division because it was a smite. Edmonton won the division easily with 111 points, but LA in the worst uh, negative turnaround in NHL history. He had over 101 points the season before. were 48 points ahead of uh, behind LA, uh, excuse me, behind Edmonton, and the only reason he made the playoffs because Colorado, the weakest team in the league, was in the division. Now, uh, the owners were just a defensive juggernaut that year, 48, 17, and 15, 417 goals for 32 more than their team in 81, 82. Now, they had Gretzky, Messier, Coffey, Anderson, Curry, Grandfield, Andy Morgan, Nett. Now, uh, Kevin Lowe as well, but as the Kings, even though they, they struggled during the year, they still had Barcel Dio and was still scoring goals. He had 314 that year, but they gave up uh, 369, was, was the third worst in the league. Now, the triple uh, crown line included, uh, he's a line mate, uh, right winger, Dave Taylor and Charlie Simmer, but Simmer missed 30 games due to injury and could not play uh, for most of the regular season. Now, uh, Jimmy Fox was there as well, and rookie forward Steve Bozek, as well as a tall drink of water, Larry Murphy. Now, the youth core included Bernie Nichols, Doug Smith, and Darrell Evans. Keep, keep an eye out for that name. Now, uh, the high number of goals scored against the Kings was in part a reflection of an outmoded defensive mentality. The 80s were a decade of witness an increasingly speedy game, one which seemed unstoppable to the Kings' old rangy stay-at-home blue liners of the 1970s. In addition, Nelly's goaltending suffered a decline. A starting goalie, Mary Lassard, who was an all-star in 81, went from 3.25 goals per game to 4.36, one of the worst in the league. And backup goalie Doug Keynes was at 4.30. Now, everybody was expecting the Kings to be easy prey for the Oilers in the first round. Now, he outscored uh, the Kings in eight games, 41-27, to and he won five of those matchups, losing only once and tying the other two. Now, two of the five Oilers wins were by scores of 11-4 and 10-3, and border games were played in Edmonton. Now, what happened in game one was uh, completely bizarre. It was a pre prelude to the great game three comeback. The Oilers led 4-1 at one point in the first period, but due to penalty trouble, now remember this, Gary Unger, the Kings answered back with four consecutive goals and never relinquished the lead. The tied, uh, Oilers tied uh, the Kings 8-8, but uh, the, the Kings eventually got two goals back for a 10-8 victory and won in a shocking upset. Now, Game 2 was more defensive style, and in Edmonton, Edmonton won by 3-2. So, we're, hey, we're saying going back to L.A., they were lucky to win uh, Game 1 in such a way, but maybe something different is going to happen. Now, when the series shifted to the forum where the Kings were 19-15-6 during the regular season, Edmonton's season road record was 17-12-11. and 11. 
Now, in the first period, the Kings fans were enthusiastic at the start of the game, but as in game two, the other order struck first. The Kings had just finished killing a penalty to Dave Taylor when Kings forward Dan Bonar jumped on a loose puck in the Oilers zone and took a shot at goal. Fuhr made the save and the Oilers counter attacked. A pass found Messi on the left wing and he took a slap shot from about 25 feet out, then went off Lassard's glove and into the net to give Edmonton a 1 0 lead. Now, while in the power play near the end of the first period, the Kings made another offensive rush at Fuhr with Dion taking a centering pass and sending a wrist shot towards the Oilers net. When Fuhr made the see, save, the rebound went to Gretzky, and eventually he scored uh, to make it 2 0. Now, as the second period started, it started, the Kings were still in the power play, but the Oilers were able to mount another rush. Gretzky took the puck in the Oilers' own, skated through center ice, and passed to Lee Folkland. Folkland skated down a win and sent a seemingly harmless snapshot towards Lassard. The Kings' goalie misplayed the sharp angular shot, and it went by him in the short side. Now, the Oilers at this point had scored two short handed goals on the same Kings power play and had taken control of the game with a 3 0 lead. Now, later in the second period, both teams were playing with three skaters per side due to penalties. The Oilers defenseman Risto Sittlin skated the puck through center ice and into the Kings zone. The Oilers maintained control with sharp passing, but after an order shot went wide in net, Kings defender Mark Hardy appeared to have control of the puck, but Gretzky swooped in behind the net and definitely stole the puck away. He then sent a quick pass over to Siltonen, who one time the shot toward the net that seemed to zoom past Lazard into the into the goal. It ricocheted against the end boards and around the left side of King's own. The goal light was turned on by the goal judge, so play was stopped as the referees convened. It was determined that Silton and shot very heavy went through the net and replays later confirmed it. The owners had increased their lead to four nothing. Now with the owners on the power play with four against three, they went on the attack again. The Oilers obtained possession of King's own in the face-off, and as they had on their fourth goal, kept possession while moving the puck. The Oilers kept the puck on the outside until they saw an opening. Anderson took a pass to the right of the King's net and saw Gretzky sneaking beside, behind Lassard, and former Montreal Canadian, now King's defenseman, Rick Chartres on the left side of the goal crease. Anderson, Anderson sent a hard pass that went through Chartres' legs and out the stick of Gretzky, and all he had to do was deflect the puck into the net to give the Oilers a power play goal, and a seemingly inside insurmountable 5 nothing lead and the score stayed that way as the second period came to a close. Now, Kings play-by-play -play announcer Bob Miller was quoted as saying at the end of the second period, I was so upset because I thought we do this every time, get everyone in LA excited about hockey and the Kings, and they go right in the dump dumpster. Now, Kings owner Jerry Buss also left the game early and was greeted with jeers from the forum crowd. The home crowd had quieted considerably as the game turned to a rout. Now, former Islander uh, Kings captain Dave Lewis and Wayne Gretzky confirmed in later interviews that the older players were laughing at him mocking the Kings in the second period while the Kings were trying to set up offense on the power play. Now, the Kings eventually went to the locker room to the second mission, obviously chagrined, but convinced that the Oilers would continue to play wide open instead of sitting back defensively to protect their lead. Dion later said that the Kings' prime focus would be on the little things in the third period, trying to make one play at a time to gradually make an attempt to get back in the game, but more importantly, salvage some pride and send a message for Game 4. Now, we all know what happened in the third period, but stay tuned, we're going to break it down. True to stranger to fiction, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for part two.